good morning everyone how are you all i hope everyone is happy god bless you and your family in the previous section we saw about spinal cord and peripheral nervous system spinal cord the spinal cord it's a long pharyngeal tube like structure that begin at the end of the brain stem and continues down almost to the bottom of the spine spinal cord consists of nerves that carry incoming and outgoing messages between the brain and the rest of the body next one peripheral nervous system peripheral nervous system it's a division of the nervous system containing all the nerve that lie outside of the central nervous system the primary role of the peripheral nervous system is due to connect the central nervous system to the organs limb and skin the peripheral nervous system itself it's divided in two parts the somatic nervous system and the autonomic nervous system each of this components play a critical role in how the peripheral nervous system operate first ones the somatic nervous system the somatic nervous system is the part of the peripheral nervous system responsible for carrying sensory and motor information to and from the central nervous system the somatic nervous system derive its name from greek word soma which means body the somatic system responsible for transmitting sensory information as well as for voluntary movement the system containing two major types motor neuron and sensory neuron the next one autonomic nervous system the autonomic nervous system is the part of the peripheral nervous system that is responsible for regulating involuntary body function uh, such as blood flow heart beat digestion and breathing in other word it is the autonomic system that control aspect of the body that are usually not under voluntary control the autonomic nervous system it's a further divided in two branches sympathetic nervous system and the parasympathetic nervous system sympathetic nervous system prepare the body to expend energy to respond to environment threats next one parasympathetic nervous system this is helps maintain normal body functions and conserve its resources I welcome everyone back to my class today we are going to discuss about a new lesson allergy what is an allergy allergy occur when your immune system over react to substances called allergens common allergens that can trigger allergic reaction include pollen pet dander and bee venom the people also have the allergies to certain food and medicine who gets allergies allergies are the sixth leading case of chronic illness in the united state more than 50 million americans each year suffer from an allergic related disease or condition including a fever asthma conjunctivitis or pink eye hives eczema or atopic dermatitis and sinus infection or sinusitis according to the center of diseases control and prevention at least 20 million americans 18 and older and more than 6.1 million children were diagnosed with allergic rhinitis commonly known as a fever in 2015 another 20 million americans were diagnosed with respiratory food or skin allergies what happen in the body during an allergic reaction allergens are typically harmless substances that trigger an immune response
response and cause a reaction in people who are allergics. The allergic reaction occur if the person inhales, touches, swallows, inject or somehow comes in contact with an allergen. Allergic reaction can be mild, severe or even life-threatening. Now move on, airborne allergens. What are airborne allergens? Airborne allergens, also called as aeroallergens, are any airborne substances that can trigger an allergic reaction. Suffering from a running, runny nose, congestions or sneezings, it's not always related to the common cold. It can also be an allergic reaction. For example, people who suffer from hay fever often experience cold-like symptoms because of excess Now move on, pollen allergy. What is a pollen allergy? Pollen is one of the most common triggers of seasonal allergy. Many people know pollen allergy as a fever, except usually refer to pollen allergy as seasonal allergic rhinitis. Each spring, summer and fall, plant release tiny pollen grain to fertilize other plants of the same species. Most of the pollen that cause allergic reaction come from trees, weeds and grasses. These plants make small, light and dry pollen grain that travel by the wind. Grasses are the most common causes of allergy. Ragweed is the main causes of weed allergies. Plant fertilized by insects like roses and some flowering trees like cherry and pear tree usually do not cause allergic rhinitis. What are the symptoms of pollen allergy? People with the pollen allergy only have symptoms when the pollen they are allergic to or in the air. Symptoms include runny nose and mucus protection, sneezing, itchy nose, eyes, ear and mouth, stuffy nose, red and watery eyes, swelling around the eyes. Now move on. Mold allergy. If you have an allergy that occurs over several seasons, you may be allergic to the spores of mold or other fungi. Molds live everywhere. Upsetting a mold source can send the spores into the air. Mold and mid dew or fungi. There are different from plants or animals in how they reproduce and grow. The seeds called spores travel through the air. Some spores spread in dry, windy weather. Others spread with the fog or dew when humidity is high. Hindling the spore causes allergic reaction in some people. Allergic symptoms from fungal spores are most common from July to early fall. But fungi grow in many places both indoor and outside. So allergic reaction can occur year round. What are the symptoms of mold allergy? The symptoms of mold allergy are very similar to the symptoms of other allergy such as sneezing, itching, runny nose, congestions and dry scaling skin. Mold spore get into your nose and causes hay fever symptoms. They also can reach the lungs and trigger asthma. Now move on. Dust mite allergy. If you have allergies or asthma, a tiny creature living in your home could be making big problems for you. Although you cannot see them, you may be having an allergic reaction to them. There are dust mites and they live in many homes. 
throw out the world. Dust mites may be the most common trigger of ear around allergic and asthma. What is a dust mite? A dust mite measures only about one quarter to one third of millimeter. There are too small to see with your eyes alone. Under a microscope, they look like white bugs. They have the eight legs, so they are not insect but arthropod like spider. What is a dust mite allergy? An allergy is a substance that causes an allergic reaction. Both the body parts and the waste of dust mites are allergen for many people. Most dust mites die in low humidity level for extreme temperature, but they leave their dead bodies and waste behind. This can continue to cause allergic reaction in a warm Humid house dust mite can survive all year. What are the symptoms of dust mites allergy? Common dust mite allergy symptoms include sneezing, runny nose, itchy, red or watery eye, stuffed nose, itchy nose, mouth or throat, itching skin, cough. Now move on. Protecting yourself from airborne allergies. How do you know if it is an airborne allergy? Differentiating between a cold and an allergy can be difficult since they both have very similar symptoms including coughing, wheezing and airway irritation. The key difference in the allergy symptoms last longer than the seasonal cold. Generally, a cold last one to two weeks anything behind that could means you have an allergy and consulting a physician and getting appropriate allergic test uh, will help you speed up recovery and prevent future triggers protection yourself from airborne allergy there are a number of Tactics you can use to help airborne allergies. These include the first one, protecting yourself from pollen. It's hard to completely remove or avoid pollen altogether, but it's helpful to know that is more concentrated earlier in the day. Closing your doors and window early in the day can prevent these allergens from entering your home. Wearing a pollen mask will further help in protecting your against pollen. Next one, protecting yourself from mold. Since mold grow in damp and wet area, using dehumidifiers to eliminate the moisture helps to keep them at bay. Fixing leaky pipes and loose tab will also reduce humidity levels and make your home less appealing to mold spores. Next one, protecting yourself from dust mite and pet dander. It is impossible to completely eliminate dust and pet dander, especially if you have a pet. However, there are certain steps that can be taken to reduce their effect. Using a vacuum cleaner with a good HIPAA filter will remove most of the dust and the pet dander. A second option would be to install an air purifier to effectively remove pollution from the home. Today I give six hard words the first one allergen second one pollen third one mold fourth one dust mites fifth one coronic sixth one mucus today biology assignment answer the following learn question answer <laughs>